Hey, Hi. it's Nikki. And it's Bray. And we're Late, Late to, to the, the Party. Party, a podcast about the film, fashion, and pop culture moments that shaped us into the weirdos that we are. And today, we're looking for a man in finance. Mm-hmm. Looks like Christian Bale. I know. I will say Christian Bale is very attractive in this movie. I agree. You know, he based his performance off of a specific, like, 1984, 83 Tom Cruise interview. That's Oh, an, an interview yeah. specifically. Yeah also hot in the 80s so yeah yeah it's very Slay. cute Slay very Tom very Cruise. cute I, I so we're talking about american psycho mm. it's a 2000 satirical horror film directed by mary heron uh based on the 1981 or 1991 sorry novel by brett easton ellis it stars christian bale as patrick bateman a new york city investment banker who apparently leads a double life as a serial killer which have you seen American Psycho before? I have. And it is it is exactly the beats that I remember. Like they're all there, except now it's funnier. Because the first time I saw this movie, I was 13. Mm. And it, I just found it terrifying and messed up. I, really? I thought it was a sick movie. I thought he was a sicko. I mean, he kind of is. But I didn't. I was too young to understand the satire and the humor of it all. So now it's a lot more enjoyable to watch. I feel like this movie ages like fine wine. Yes. Like I watched this movie for the first time a couple years ago, like probably like 2019. And I, well, I couldn't believe I hadn't seen it or like that. It, I know it had cult status yeah. and I was always recommended to watch it, but I just never sat down and really just, I don't know, let Patrick Bateman take over me and watch it. And I thought it was funny back then. I really liked it back then, but I like it even more now. And especially thinking about where we are culturally right now, Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, American Psycho was more relevant than ever. Like our values, you know, a hundred percent, you know, what surprised me, Patrick Bateman being socially aware or at least Mm -hmm. appearing to be socially aware. He's like, he's essentially the woke Charlotte meme. Yes, (laughs) he is. I kind of loved that though. I was surprised. I wasn't expecting that from him of all people it's so funny because you could you know how a lot of a lot of films especially a film that came out in 2000 you could update Mm -hmm. to now but especially with that you know the thing patrick bateman does when he's like trying to impress his friends and like regurgitate information and be like the woke king that he is Mm -hmm. like that's what someone now would do it is funny. Yeah, you can't rework that. That's that's 2024. He's like more woke than like his friends. Like his friends are like saying anti-Semitic mm-hmm. remarks. But like things, on the surface he, woke. He's yes. not really woke. He doesn't know what that means. Like, he's think a he psychopath. Does. Yeah. He regurgitates everything. Mm-hmm. But don't we? Have we all turned into Patrick Bateman? That's what it made me think of this rewatch. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. <laughs> so but you found it funny, right? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah cool i like how how he's unhinged and Mm -hmm. you know we just get his thoughts yeah is anything that like stands out to you upon watching american psycho just like i think it's funny like the moments where i'm not sure that he's actually saying anything out loud or if people are just not noticing but it's probably just his thoughts coming out and he could be like like that scene where he goes to the club mm-hmm. and the club, the club. Yes. Which I love a nineties club, by the way, or, or I guess 80s. is it eighties. Mm-hmm. This movie takes place in the eighties. It came oh. out in 2000, but I keep thinking it's the nineties yeah. for some reason. Yeah. That, I guess that explains the phones. Well, it was probably filmed in the nineties, like probably filmed in 99 is my guess and came out in 2000, but it's from the st- like the time period of the movie and of the book is the 80s. Oh, that somehow went over my head because mm. I was thinking the night. I don't know. Yeah, I it was like I've the been, 80s. Maybe because we just watched Party Girl, like all the all the clubbing. No, this would have been like the same time period. Uh, this movie has Chloe Sevigny in it. Yes. And it's very much the same time period as the last days of disco, oh. which is really funny that Chloe Sevigny would be in last days of disco that talks about yuppie culture and conforming to like corporate life and becoming a yuppie that's true and she's an american psycho the well, assistant that was a thing in the 80s too right just they were concerned about yuppies you know just yuppie culture right? well like, I, th- I think a was, lot of people from the 60s like growing up in the 60s when they became adults 
they, you know, decided to become yuppies and like get real jobs and cut their hair. Basically what Huey Lewis and the news were saying in Hip to be Square. Hip to be Square. Yeah. yeah. They like were like, mom and dad, I don't want to be a hippie like you. That's lame. <laughs> I want to have a car and work in finance and cut my hair. Oh, my God. Ben's, I'm, now I'm thinking about Ben Stiller uh, in, um, oh, gosh. Uh, what was that movie? Reality Bites. Reality Bites. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, he could Ben be, Stiller in Reality Bites. He could have been Patrick Bateman, you know, if he was like a little more psycho. Yeah. I think that the pipeline is for sure real. But, um, yeah. Ben Stiller is an interesting person to bring up because, I don't know, he does have like a Patrick Bateman look to him. Yeah, he has the look. Well, what did you think Patrick Bateman? Just in just, general. Just in general. Um, well, I thought, I found him very entertaining. Um, and I love his attention to detail. I love his his knowledge of music, his skincare routine. I was impressed by his skincare routine. Um, but he seems really on edge. You know, I'm like, couldn't be me. Like, he seems so concerned with, uh, I don't know, so many things. Like, every little thing. Like, the business card scene is so intense. Yeah, let's talk about the business card scene. Um, well, he reveals his new business card. Mm -hmm. like to his colleagues or whatever and they also have new business cards and it's like uh they're trying to show each other up with who has like the best business card and he uh, actually i take this back i do feel like i relate to him in, on some level because like he is trying to fit in and when he doesn't he takes it so hard i love the fact that he gets so like angry about a font <laughs> like it, it's an interesting way to I don't know if it's like a combination of Christian Bale or like Mary Heron, but the way you can feel Patrick Bateman's like rage boiling over, like without even saying a word. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's very interesting, but yeah, you can just like feel his rage about like a font choice or whatever, like on a business card. Yeah. I think it's also interesting. Like the people he's around, like at least where he like works, like, they're all concerned about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just, I don't know. Like, it makes me think, like, what does that say? You know, like the environment he is in. Like, if he was working, like, a different job, maybe would he not turn into a psycho? I don't know. I like the I like that we don't know anything about Patrick Bateman. Like, we don't have an origin story for him. It's not like the Joker. Right. You know? Like, so we don't have anything to to really empathize with him on or any, like, excuses or any like childhood trauma to play with, we can just see like the satire in front of us and be like, oh, this is like makes no sense. I like that idea, but I do wonder. I'm like, who hurt you as a kid? Who hurt you? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, Patrick Bateman, it was like a whole process to cast him. Really? Yeah. Did you are you are you aware of like the whole casting situation? I'm not. So the studio so brett easton ellis comes out with this book in 91 it's like super controversial and he originally was like it never can be made into a film like i don't know how this is possible but anyways throughout the 90s they're trying to get this made i believe johnny depp is like the first person they have in mind but who the studio really wants is leo dicaprio right off titanic wolf of wall street leo no 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 like baby boy like teenage heartthrob leo because this would have been like 98 yeah no i know yeah the pipeline well well that makes me think because what what's up huh nothing okay yeah okay uh so i don't know it just is interesting to think that they like really fought really hard for leo mm. um and mary heron knew right away like she wanted christian bale so she would like be fired from the project and then come back on um, because she just didn't want Leo DiCaprio. And I think it's really interesting how she like stuck to her guns and she ended up directing it and she ended up having her lead be Christian Bale. Good. Like they both really fought for this film, 
but yeah it's hard to picture Le- uh, yeah i hear what you're saying too but, but also i don't think i like i love wolf of wall street i like him in wolf of wall street but there is that like especially during this time leo dicaprio was way more of like a movie star with the capital m capital s and christian bale was like an unknown character actor yeah um and you know leo dicaprio as he's gotten older is a little more of a character actor but he's still just like leo dicaprio yeah and it's interesting to see like i think the way that american psycho and wolf of wall street handle like debauchery and like toxic masculinity is very different so like leo works in wolf of wall street but it is and like i feel like he would be terrible at american psycho or at least mary heron's american psycho because we know too much about leo and we know about like what is it the pussy posse and we know about him like literally being patrick bateman in real life to a certain degree like that rumor that he allegedly has sex with his like headphones and you know oh so so i feel like because he's too we don't know anything about christian bale all we know about christian bale is sometimes he can get angry and that's it like we don't you know yeah i do kind of like that he's a bit of a mystery you know yeah i do too i think he's not just like a killer he you know we don't know anything about him he's like soulless in the eyes yeah i don't know how christian bale does it like he's really good i don't know it's it blows my mind because I've seen him in other things and I'm like, I, I like Christian Bale and he seems kind of like a warm person. So it's kind of weird, you know, to see him yeah. as Patrick Bateman, but he does such a good job with it. What's your favorite Christian Bale role? I would say American Psycho. I mean, probably, probably the Dark Knight, maybe. Are you a big fan of the Chris Nolan uh, Batmans? Yeah. Yeah. I love Batman in general, though. I love all. I love. Uh, I also love the Tim Burton Batmans, though. What? Are, what's your favorite Batman? Oh, I don't know. Probably the Dark Knight. Yeah, that's a good one. Christian Bale. Christian Bale <laughs> as Batman. It is Christian Bale as Batman. Yeah. He's the most attractive Batman, I think. I think so too. Like, what is there? Like a Val Kilmer. Yeah, uh, I feel like some of the Batmans look better with the mask on. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. You know, such as. Uh, no no shade just you know i hear you um yeah what are your thoughts on casting like christian bale as batman do you think he was a good choice or you know what do you think in this alternate universe because for a while there oliver stone's going to direct leo dicaprio was going to be patrick bateman in that alternate universe how do you think that would like turn out what are your thoughts on that casting i mean i'm trying to picture leo like like at that age to be like right after titanic yeah right before the beach it doesn't make a lot of sense i mean i guess because i feel like he has like a baby face and he was pretty mm-hmm. young so maybe that could be a little scarier but i feel like it just patrick or not patrick bateman i feel <laughs> um I feel like Christian Bale just kind of fits so perfect, you know, because mm-hmm. then they'd have to change the age of the character too, probably. Maybe. Unless Maybe. they, I don't know. I don't know if they would have to. I don't know if that would be like the, well, uh, Oliver Stone wanted to make this film more traditionally like scary. Okay. So we, we have to credit Mary Heron a little bit for a lot more of like the satirical like slant to it. Cause she, you know, her and her writer, they took it up a notch in the other direction. I'm glad. To, like, the black comedy versus, like, a traditional, like, thriller horror situation. I think that's better. I think it's easier to digest. And I like when a movie's offbeat anyway, mm. you know? Um, I really can't picture Leo. I don't know. I think I could picture him now or, you know, excuse me, like, during Wolf of Wall Street days, maybe. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think Leo could have pulled it off, but it would have been interesting. Like, just I feel like he could do a really good job and like maybe the baby face would like add something to it. But it seems like it could have been a career killer for him versus like Uh. because we don't know anything about Christian Bale. And at that time, like 
what he was like in velvet gold mine and like newsies mm. so no one really knew him and he like became you know the oscar winning actor he is now and like this was like his launching pad i think right after titanic it would have been a lot for the yeah. public to digest. And this was kind of a controversial movie anyways, right? Like yeah. not everyone loved this movie. So it's hard to picture though. I don't know why. I mean, I've never read the book, but I still, it's like, it blows my mind how controversial at least the movie was. Maybe the people just weren't ready. <laughs> but now we're ready. Yeah. I think we're ready now. Um, oh yeah. It's interesting. I want to know your thoughts. So, I read the like oral history of American Psycho. Uh, Vice did it a couple years ago, and Guinevere Turner, who's the co-writer and one of the ladies mm. that Patrick Bateman hooks up with and tries in murders. Oh, um, she says, "I believe I'm the one who started that rumor. I mean, I don't know if it's true. My friend who had just spoken to Gloria Steinem said that Gloria Steinem took Leonardo DiCaprio to a Yankees game. I believe he said, please don't do this move." I believe she said, please don't do this movie coming off of Titanic. There's an entire planet full of 13 year old girls waiting to see what you do next. And this uh, is going to be a movie that has horrible violence towards women. Soon after that, Leo dropped out. So who knows what really happened? Gloria Steinem ended up marrying Christian Bale's dad, which is really interesting. I wonder what Thanksgiving was like. Huh? That is what Gloria Steinem. Really? Yeah. Gloria Steinem is married to Christian Bale's dad. Wow. That's cool. I mean, for Christian Bale. Yeah. I think that's cool. I know. It it's, It makes me want to, like, watch some, some more Christian Bale's films. Because I have a Bale blind spot where I haven't seen a lot of Yeah. I do, films. too. That's why I said Batman. Because, I mean, I know he's been in a lot of things. And I feel like I've seen him. But in what? Yeah. Other than Batman and, I, and American Psycho. I've seen him every now and again. I feel like I see every other Christian Bale film. Mm-hmm. And they're never the ones he's nominated for Oscars. They're always the other one. Yeah. So. The lesser knowns. Yeah. Or like a Ford v. Ferrari situation where I'm like, huh. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't know he was going to be in this. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I always love him in stuff, though. Same. But but yeah, I wonder if there is a feminist slant or it's just a coincidence that this movie is very, very clearly like a feminist film in a, in a weird way. Yeah. I wonder if w- you can see a Gloria Steinem <laughs> influence in his, his work. Oh, maybe. I'm just curious. You think that influence? I have no idea. <laughs> but, but I don't know. Maybe Gloria Steinem helped Christian Bale steal the deal for American Psycho. Possibly. Yeah, maybe he was on the fence and she was like, you know. Well, he wanted to do this film. But I, I guess I'm saying like maybe... I don't know, maybe she, like, taking Leo DiCaprio to the Yankees game Mm. and being like, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. That's a good point that she makes, though, because a lot of young girls were looking up to him, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could just cut out his whole fan base at the time, possibly. That Leo fever, you know? Which he kind of did anyways, but at least he did it, like, as a slow burn on his own terms. Yeah, not just, like... (laughs) Well, I don't know if, like, you can get back from American Psycho. Like, where's the... For Leo DiCaprio, peak Leo mania, at least. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you have to do, like, The Beach? Like, not really popular, like, really under the radar. The Beach, yeah. I don't know if that helped or hurt. I feel like that's just... I feel like that's just... Yeah. I feel like that's a neutral landing point. So he can then do Catch Me If You Can. (laughs) And then be the Leo that we know today, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But if he was Patrick Bateman, it could have all... Maybe it was like a train stopping. And the universe works in mysterious ways. I don't know. Just a thought. And Gloria Steinem works in mysterious ways. Yeah. The Lord works hard, but Gloria Steinem works harder for Christian Bale to get cast as Patrick Bateman. But but yeah. So what did you think of like Patrick Bateman's persona? Just like the mask he puts on every day? Yeah. The literal and figurative mask. I mean... It's interesting. I feel like it's just reflective. I feel like everyone puts on a persona to a degree, mm-hmm. but I feel like the persona he puts on is is kind of annoying. But it's like he's he's trying to fit in, I guess, in this world, I guess, of these like businessmen. Like they're all kind of shitty people, I feel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
just like when they're like in their little circle talking like it's i don't know a lot of times i feel like I'm like how oh, these people don't seem like great people and he's trying to fit in with them you know mm. um but i don't know uh oh but he's he's so attractive you know <laughs> I have so many mixed feelings on Patrick Bateman. I mean, obviously he's he's a serial killer, um, but then I find I, I empathize with him just a little. How do you empathize with with him? I guess it's just the idea of trying to like fit in. Like I feel like that's a relatable thing, but he just takes it way too far, you know. Um, and he obviously doesn't fit in because he's like sociopathic or whatever. But. I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, he definitely is a psychopath. I feel like I'm like, (laughs) this is not coming out right. No, I'm just waiting. I'm I'm wanting that, you know, hear your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I should rephrase. Yeah. Um, I feel like like his mask always feels like it's one step away from cracking, you know? And I don't know if that's just from societal pressure on his character or what, you know? See, like I, th- my theory on Patrick Bateman is he like is a psychopath. Like he definitely has antisocial personality disorder. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think he like feels things that normal people do. So he's just always trying to emulate the person he's with. He's emulating like a Wall Street bro and he's like regurgitating and feeding himself a lot of, you know, media pornography. Yeah. Like everything in is surrounding him kind of informs who he is. But not in the way like he's taking it and making his own and being influenced. He like is literally just regurgitating information. Which is why I think that when uh, Patrick Bateman kills people, I think it's really funny that he's just regurgitating this like it's basically like music facts. reviews. Yeah, yeah, he's like pop up video. That's my favorite though is when he's doing the pop up video. I do. I love that too. I'm like he's like a podcaster. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm like maybe does he just need a podcast? Maybe Patrick Bateman just needs. Well, I Patrick Bateman. I understand completely why Gen Z men are obsessed with Patrick Bateman. They're obsessed? Well, I don't know. I see a lot on my TikTok of like, well, I've seen the baby girlification of Patrick Bateman more so because Uh, I'm a girl. Okay. But, you know, a lot of people using like Patrick Bateman in like a funny, ironic way to be like me, you know, but I do think a lot of men, especially now I can see. I can see the pipeline. I can see the influenced in the influencer getting their like fancy business cards or yeah, what? or just like the rise of the, the wall street bro again. And like on another level, I, I think like Patrick Bateman, if he was in 2024 would be a great TikToker. He'd be like such a great content creator. Yeah. Cause he has charisma. He has charisma uniqueness no and talent no but he has charisma and that's all you need like he would be a prime tiktoker because he invented the everything shower oh my gosh yeah what okay what is the everything is that just like you just do your whole routine in the shower basically yeah you've never done an everything shower no i think i do i just didn't know that's what it was called i didn't know i've been doing that yeah yeah everything shower so you you start you gotta do your hair Mm-hmm. all the way down to your toes you exfoliate you shave i feel like patrick bateman's skincare routine puts me to shame though like i feel like i need to step it up after watching this i'm like damn that man cares about his skin mm-hmm. like did you feel any connection to him though because he does wear a friedman's peel off mask oh oh Really? It was Friedman. Yeah. Oh, I don't I don't know, but that's one can assume it was Friedman's because I don't know any other maybe in the nineties, whenever this was filmed, peel off masks were more the rage. Mm. But upon my Google search, most masks nowadays do They're not sheet peel masks. off. Mm-hmm. Most are she I actually prefer a peel or actually I prefer a mud mask, if mm. I'm being real. But 
But you used to be obsessed with the Freedman's peel off mask. Yes, I did. So what did you did you feel anything when I love that glossy? Like, yeah, it's they're fun to wear. It's like you're wearing. <laughs> I feel like this is like just oh man. I promise I'm not a serial killer. I yeah. Um. But yeah. So you were fascinated by a skincare routine? Yes. But mostly because like all the steps, like it seems like he's really taking care of his skin. I feel like I just have like one, maybe two steps, you know, I'm like, I just wash my face. Bam. Good enough. But he's like scrubbing. He's meticulous. Yeah. I feel like I, I've seen it in so much, like so many TV shows and film, but the one that comes to mind is, uh, Sydney Sweeney as K- Cassie in Euphoria. That's what I was thinking too. I'm like, is, is that just a sign you're having a psychotic break if you're like spending too much time on your skincare routine? My guess it is. Yeah. I think that's like one of the telltale signs you're going to descend into madness is like a radically like time consuming skincare routine. So maybe it's good that I just have one <laughs> or two steps, I guess. Yeah, maybe. It's good that I'm not taking like a whole hour just like a one to Patrick Bateman, you might be. Yeah, you're not Patrick Bateman. Phew. But but it is interesting that, like, I don't know if there's a lot of films before this that show off, like, that toxic, toxic masculinity in a way. Like, starting from all, all of Patrick Bateman's friends being, like, really, like, pretty much, like, anti-Semitic, terrible people, but mm. also, like, thriving and being really successful. Yeah. And then to like, what was I talking? What was I, my thought? Oh, but like also Patrick Bateman is a very specific, not killing aside. He's a very specific type of man that I've seen, but I don't see on screen a lot. Mm. Like that Sigma male. Yeah. Or someone who identifies as a Sigma male, which usually they're betas with insecurities. But what that's, are your thoughts on that? True. Just like how he depicts that. Yeah. Like how the film depicts that certain type of yeah I masculinity feel like that's accurate i feel like that's that's what i was trying to articulate is like yeah i feel like that's a, that is like a real thing like maybe like in real life may not be like that person may not be patrick bateman but like they would be i feel like i've seen like his friends mm-hmm. like those group of friends yeah well then i've seen the patrick bateman too though minus the killing like being like really obsessed with your body oh uh, like to a d- yeah like taking it a little too far yeah, like being so self-obsessed and also like using, you know, especially pornography with like young dudes because he's like 27, mm-hmm. which is also a very interesting thing to be like really young, I would say, and so successful. But yeah. it's almost like he's just like bobbing along in life. It is like he's bobbing. You know, what's interesting, too, is he doesn't even seem like like he had he's watching like pornography or whatever, but he's not even really paying attention. Like he's not really watching it. It's just on, like he's consuming it, but it's like, it just washes over him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's, which I guess is everything with Patrick Bateman, but yeah, I thought that was interesting. You know, even when he's like having sex in the movie, like there it's, there's no connection to anything there. Like Mm -mm. it's just very, yeah he's very cold very clinical but great sense of uh style and like decor and direction yeah yeah when he's like you're not eating it oh yeah he he could be a good director (laughs) director yeah he could he could either be a content creator or a director i feel like those would be 2024 is set up (laughs) yeah for patrick bateman so like I did feel a little validity because Brett Easton Ellis, when he was writing about or when he was writing American Psycho said, whenever I'm about to ask or about to talk, blah, blah, blah. Okay. He says, whenever I'm asked to talk American Psycho, I have to remember why I was writing at the time and what it meant to me. Mm. A lot of it had to do with frustration with having to become an adult and what it meant to be an adult male in American society. Hmm. I didn't want to be one because all it was about was status. Consumerist success was really the embodiment of what it meant to be a cool guy. Money, trophy, girlfriends, nice clothes, and cool cars. It all seemed extremely shallow to me. Mm-hmm. Yet at the same time, you have an urge to conform. 
you want to be part of the group. You don't want to be shunned. Huh. So when I was writing that book as a young man, I was having this battle with conforming to what was then yippie dumb, the yip, yuppie lips, bleh, yuppie dumb, the yuppie lifestyle, going to restaurants and trying to fit in. I think American Psycho was ultimately my argument about this. That's really interesting because it's almost like it's like all the things he just said are personified in Patrick mm-hmm. Bateman. But it's almost like, wait, so he kind of uses Patrick Bateman as like his internal frustrations, I guess. To yeah. Make it come to life. What gets me too is like, it's so funny to see Patrick Bateman try to make reservations at Dorcia and just being on the phone and being like, okay, great. We'll see you then. And just like fudge it, you know, Mm -hmm. it killed me. Yeah. Why? It's an interesting, it is so funny when you like look on the outside, you're like, all of this stuff really doesn't matter. Like Mm -mm. there's so much more like business cards. That doesn't matter. Like it's, it's such a big deal in this, world i guess like in their like wall street lives but it does matter think about how many things that we do you and i even mm-hmm. or any person our age even today it's not the 80s we're not dealing with yuppie or yuppie culture but we're still like getting jobs because of the status it's I've, not because we want them i feel my most patrick bateman when i'm in my job Right. Well, you know what? I <laughs> just I feel like I'm ready to snap. I just read this article, which had a clickbait title like Gen Z workers are getting fired. And a lot of a lot of people, a lot of boomers were complaining. They were like, this like generation or this latest generation doesn't care about the job like that. And they just want it to be a job. And it's like, that's yeah. even funny. I feel like we've like hit like we've fully gone circular where it's like crazy that the boomers are now they were former yuppies yes they're like why don't these like young adults why aren't they all in it why aren't they conforming why do they think this is just a job because it is because yeah but that's that has to be like yeah that has to be something right that is interesting yeah but then then reading this it's like oh but they felt that way felt, too right do you spend what is it 20 30 years like do you just condition yourself to be like conform this job's it. my world i thought it was interesting too like speaking of conforming just like that like the suits and like even down to the glasses like it's almost like a uniform mm-hmm. that patrick bateman's wearing along with like some i think oh is it paul is what's his name uh um, jared leto jared leto's character paul yeah. allen paul allen mm-hmm. it was hard to remember two first names well all those like they're so indistinguishable these like men they look the same they all have like the slick back hair and some of them the same like tortoiseshell glasses or whatever dude that's nowadays except they're not as chic they're not wearing all of her peoples we've seen it you know you know <laughs> you know and they're always wearing top ciders uh-huh. they all look like jake late our homeboy in our minds jake lacy on white lotus oh yeah yeah yeah. they are all just looking the same talking the same walking the same so true and what about that speaks to men just the same like i don't know pack mentality is that Maybe. a thing do they feel important how but how do you identify as a sigma male a lone wolf while you're conforming how mm. brie i don't know i i don't know <laughs> <laughs> like i don't I get into their mind and let me know because like this movie is a very like funny like take on that but it's so interesting that we do this now too i'm like what the fuck i don't know i thought it was interesting too that one of his like friends or co-workers um i think he was like closeted right mm-hmm. and yeah. he like thinks he's coming on to him when he's about to choke him out with the gloves he's <laughs> like i knew it <laughs> <laughs> like it was like the funniest thing but it got me thinking i'm like oh is there something there like i don't know i mean Could- men are gay all men are gay there's that line of like just hyper masculinity maybe and gayness that I don't know. I think it's a real thing. Yeah. Can, can you elaborate <laughs> on that? I don't know. Like why are guys slapping each other's butts on the football field all the time? It is. 
maybe that's also a circle like are you so straight that you become gay maybe i don't know it fascinates me it is like i feel like it's a guy thing i don't know i don't quite understand it's so interesting but i you know my idea about why american psycho resonates like with today's men it might be that like freedom to have a skincare routine and like take care of yourself Mm -hmm. and like be cool but also like have a life that no one knows about like maybe there's like a little like superiority that comes with that like maybe it's like a lot of complexes on top of each other i don't know i'm just thinking i don't know if that makes any sense but yeah like what wouldn't they know like like i guess what i'm trying to say is like Maybe it gives men like this freedom in a way. Like, you know, it reminds me a lot of like when um, people would watch Fight Club uh-huh. and they would interpret it. Like, they would totally misinterpret Fight Club. Okay. And they wouldn't realize that it's, you know, talking about toxic masculinity and not just like you should take it word for word. It's uh, a s- satire, you know? Yeah, I think I missed that message as well i d- didn't see the end of fight club i had to oh. i stopped watching it you gotta finish i love fight club um but i know you can't talk about fight club so yeah <laughs> yeah rule number one um but it, it kind of reminds me of that how fight club for a lot of men is like like a cry it's like a rallying cry for all of them to be like yeah we don't have to do anything for status or women we're just dudes being dudes and no more materialism Uh. and you know they like take this like idea of like tyler durden and kind of champion him as their like role model maybe that's also like a patrick bateman thing to a degree where they're like oh you know he's very successful Mm -hmm. and takes care of himself and his body and his body's a temple and there's also this life no one knows about. Like, so it gives him a little superiority. So maybe they, I don't know. Yeah. They resonate with him in that way. It gives him like a freedom to, to be, to be a man, <laughs> a Thanks, Sigma Patrick man. Bateman. <laughs> He's even my though, role model. <laughs> even though that's not the point of the movie yeah, I was going to say, but, isn't that like maybe the opposite of the movie? Like, isn't mm-hmm. that more like a warning of against that kind of, but isn't fight club that too? I guess. So. See, I need to watch fight yeah. club. But I've heard it's so good. Yeah. Like, and uh, yeah. But it's another one of those, like, Chuck Palnick, I don't think intended for it to be interpreted that way. I don't think David Fincher did. It's just what we do, I guess. Yeah. I think men <laughs> maybe, like, look for that. I don't know. I was asking my fiance about it. Ah. He had a lot of. Yeah. Did, what did he say? Just, is that what he said? Basically, what Bretty Stinella said about just having to conform and mm. grow like, up, and no one cares about you, especially if you're a white man. No, ever you because you have all the privilege and you have everything that if you don't like, if you're not successful, you don't get like mm. any like excuse. They're like everything's set up for you. I see. Yeah, so. but I mean, it's a little different with American Psycho because these people are all really like rich, but they're really successful but because still, they conform. Yeah, but well, well, I think it's interesting because even. Like Patrick Bateman feels inferior though most of the of the time, and like, you know, even like his apartment, like it's a very nice apartment. I'm sure it's very expensive, but like when he after he kills Paul Allen, when he goes over there, he's like, "Damn, his apartment's better than mine. Yeah, it's a better, it's a better location. It's definitely more expensive. Like that's what his concern is mm-hmm. is like status. Well, he's concerned about the font on the business cards. Yeah, he's yeah. Like the last thing he says, which I find hilarious uh, when he kills Paul Allen is like about his reservation to Dorcia. Oh, yeah. It's just like even someone getting a reservation over you can Mm -hmm. like make you feel so inferior. Sets you off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get it. Like to a degree. Yeah. (laughs) You know, to a degree, like those little micro things. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of the murders? You know, I, okay. Cause I was thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I don't think he committed that many murders. Who do you think he killed? I've been trying to figure that out. I've been thinking on it all day. I, 
I think he probably killed the girl on the street in the beginning. Um, because Cran Apple doesn't seem like a likely story. Like that just does not look like <laughs> Cran Apple, you know. Um, I don't, it's very hard to say because I thought he had killed Paul Allen. However. Like, the ending makes it so confusing and ambiguous. It makes it seem like, oh, he's still alive. Like, when he goes to the closet, too. Yeah, the closet scene is kind of like a mind fuck. Um, I'm like, I could see him, like, probably killing sex workers for sure. I don't... I think he's, like, desensitized. And he probably did kill the homeless man. Um, But, like, I don't think he went on a killing spree necessarily. Like, I don't think he would have gotten away with that. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Even with the cops, when they try to get him at the end, like it's very much like like a movie, like how the cars explode. I'm like, that's not very likely that like this man would just take a couple shots and then it would turn into like, uh, you know, like a Michael Bay film or something. Like he turns into John Wick all of a sudden. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, this is a fantasy. Like, I'm pretty sure he's just having a little fantasy slash minty b right now yeah like is that psychosis or whatever psychosis yeah like that atm yeah with the kitten yeah i'm like i don't know if that was real or not maybe but i'm like what he just shot a lady on the street i mean i guess things like that's magical happen, but magical killing spree yeah do you think he killed anyone or yeah i think he did i don't like i know mary heron was really disappointed at the takeaway of he didn't kill anyone Mm. like i know that there's definitely ambiguity and i think that's the genius of it because it really doesn't matter how many people patrick bateman killed Mm -mm. like this film isn't really meant to have a kill count like with scream like we talked about pretty recently yeah i'm like kill count i know you know well you know what's interesting about the kill count is like at the end he's like calling his lawyer Mm -hmm. um and he's like i think i killed like 20 people maybe 40 which is i feel like a pretty big this jump jump yeah it's like double it's like double it's like how do you not know and it's like wait we've maybe seen about 20 if that like and just, also that many people like the way this movie plays out it's only been maybe a few days like a week maybe passes it feels like right mm-hmm. like yeah not a lot of time has passed because paul allen really is out of town right yeah so two weeks maybe maybe tops yeah but you can't like I don't even in just like one day him killing like 10 people just in that little shit. Like I'm like, that's that's not realistic. Um, but I looked up like Ted Bundy because he yeah. references him a lot in this movie, uh, which is interesting. Like it's kind of also meta. a hottie. The, well, well okay. I don't know. I, don't I, looked at hot, him, I was going to say I looked at that photo of him. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought he was hotter than this. It's the Zac Efron thing. It's because, okay, because like in 2017, Zac Efron played with, played Ted Bundy. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. No, what? What? <laughs> no, I'm like, what? why was he playing Ted Bundy? To, I don't know. I think, that's, actor? I think that's the Ted Bundy I'm thinking of. Yeah. I'm thinking of Zac Efron. Yeah. Way more attractive. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I feel like it's one of those things where we've like mandela affected ourselves yeah to think ted bundy's hot when it's really just like we're thinking of zach efron in yeah. the 1970s garb and makeup yes because i was shocked i was shook when i saw real photos of the real ted bundy yeah he's not a hottie he in is real not life. no i mean maybe he would have been charismatic maybe like on the street if you met him oh you like, could have fallen susceptible it's like it, it must have been the charisma you think he has like the joe alwyn effect like I don't know. A lot of people say that he's very attractive in real life. Maybe. And you don't get it unless you like. Unless you see him. Like you see him. Yeah. It has to be because those pictures. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Anyway. What was my point? Oh, um, Ted Bundy, his murder count over the decades or whatever that he admitted to 30 people. Just 30. Yeah. And that's over like decades. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't add up with Patrick. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't just immediately become like a psycho killer and. Well, also when he's trying to kill those girls on the staircase, he has a chainsaw. None of his That's neighbors. That's not like. Yes. Yes. They're not going to call the cops. They're not going to st- at least step out and be like, what's, what's 
going on and he's running around butt naked <laughs> yeah. like with blood all, and like a chainsaw i'm like there's no remnants of blood anywhere to be found like yeah i'm pretty sure someone would have called the cops or something there would have been an investigation also you think they would have dusted for fingerprints or something at paul allen's house mm-hmm. maybe he was there i don't really i don't know it's so strange but also the chainsaw scene like dropping a chainsaw like what is the likelihood like you're actually gonna hit that person in a spiral staircase situation like that's just those are like dreams i've had i've had dreams like that where i'm either patrick bateman or i'm the ladies mostly i'm the ladies but yeah it's like but not like exactly like that but it's like weird things like dropping a chainsaw yeah and being like just dropping things like seeing what happened it does feel like a dream sequence it does and then it's interesting because later in his notebook he has like all these scribbles of pretty much all that stuff happening so maybe he was just doodling in his head. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like you're just also, I was confused at the end too, like where he's like, it almost makes it seem like he could have two different personalities. Like his lawyer, if that is his lawyer, doesn't recognize him. And yeah. Doesn't call, he's like, that's not your name. I'm very confused about that. But then his group of friends is like, Oh, Hey Bateman. So are, I mean, it's hard to tell. It makes me just question what's real and what isn't. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I don't want to know to be honest yeah that's part of the fun i think yeah watch i think my theory is he killed like one person he killed the homeless man oh and that's it or he killed the girl psychotic break you think or he killed this like he probably killed like one or two people Mm -hmm. tops probably yeah do you think that um that woman's head's really in the fridge (laughs) or do you think you know could that could also be a hallucination yeah maybe because i that's that's so messy very messy like he does a lot of messy things but he doesn't like to get messy you know really like he doesn't want his soup to get messy so it's no. counterintuitive in a way to be you know yeah he is so, so sterile but you know what i've met people like that sterile very sterile and they also seem like psychos yeah you know like people that are way too ocd do kind of seem like psychos that's true red flag <laughs> Maybe I'm just saying that because like my ex reminds me a little bit of Patrick Bateman. Yeah. (laughs) A little bit. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just having flashbacks. (laughs) You're like, phew, touched a bullet. Uh, Did you think it was too violent? Because that was like a big Um, controversy I know at the time. I don't think so. Not in comparison to like things I have seen. I think for a 13 year old girl, yes. Because that's when I, it was too violent for me on first viewing. Like, did you think because i know the book is a lot more violent especially towards women Mm. but what are your thoughts on like the way it does portray violence against women and just violence in general um well it well it seems like patrick bateman he doesn't well he does kind of focus on like women or specific like ladies of the night you could say Mm -hmm. um Oh, yeah. He doesn't try to kill Reese Witherspoon. That's true. He doesn't. But she's not. She's another one I'm confused about because like she's never really around much. We Mm -mm. don't see her. They're dating. We know they're dating. We know that she wants to get married, but they. I don't know what she does, you know, for a living. I don't know. Like they don't really go. They go on like what? Like two dates or something. Yeah. And I mean, we see his secretary played by Chloe Sevigny um, and he almost kills her but he doesn't i don't know my, what was my point just no one's really safe though because mm-hmm. i don't know if he did kill paul allen but he definitely wanted to and he kills the homeless man it just seems like he acts on impulse maybe or anyone that he finds maybe inferior so maybe he wouldn't kill because it's, he's trying to keep up appearances he wouldn't kill reese witherspoon's character he wouldn't kill his girlfriend it's more for practical reasons yeah. like he really even can't kill his assistant he has to kill like the homeless man and go on a full monologue about how he's an inferior human. Yeah. And he needs to do just better. get a job. Or that was wild. Yeah. Cause I was like, wait, is this, you know, speaking of TikTok, I've seen those TikToks, you know, where people give money to homeless people. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh yeah. 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 I, I didn't know, know where that was going. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, kill people. <laughs> no, 
anyway, I don't know what my point was. Um, but no, but the, my argument's invalid anyways because he kills in quotes Paul Allen and he feels Patrick Bateman feels inferior. Everyone else he kills though is inferior. Is inferior. So I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I know it's a stumper. Yeah, I feel. But I don't know. I feel like as far as violence, though, it feels kind of campy. Yes. So it's hard to take too seriously. So maybe if it was like, maybe if it was less camp. Directed by a man, maybe. And maybe, yeah, maybe. Because it's, it's really not that bad. I feel like Texas Chainsaw is probably worse. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of films are a lot worse. Yeah. I'm, and I, I can imagine the book being a lot worse. Yeah. So I don't know. I just don't know if. Yeah, maybe the director yeah. saved that. <laughs> I think Mary Heron did save American Psycho. I couldn't imagine it being in lesser hands. I feel like if a male directed it, we would have a fight club situation for real all over again. Where like, I don't know. I mean, who knows what would happen if like someone on David Fincher's caliber that was a man directed American like if, if Oliver Stone and Leo DiCaprio made their American Psycho mm. would we have even more psychos roaming around like would it like would disenfranchised men really glob on to Patrick Bateman you know like I don't much. know I don't know if that's silly but you know like if a man directed it it might give like a weird sense Maybe of like too close freedom to it yeah you if know not even intentionally I think it would just give from like the male perspective it would it would open it up. So like any violence towards women would seem like violence towards women and misogyny and like be mm. really scary and creepy where it's like when a woman directs American Psycho, specifically Mary Heron, it's like, oh, this is so dark yeah, because this is kind of how men act. And it reflects like just society yeah. in general. And she's, and there's satire. Yeah. Like there's like, maybe it's not, super like funny but it's like oh like objective like there's like that humor that just makes it a little more digestible and gets the point across it's a little more meta and not yeah too serious i guess yeah or i mean i think she like being a woman with a woman's perspective can kind of step away from it a little more like you really can't satirize something that you're so close to the vest on so if like Oliver Stone was directing this he might he might I guess my point is like I think on some degree a lot of men most men have like a visceral like resentment towards women Mm. just deep down it's like somewhere in their bones and that would show through yeah (laughs) yes but like that would that would just peek through or just come across as resentment or hate towards women it wouldn't come out right yeah yeah i agree yeah yeah so not being so close might might help um hmm. can i ask you a question about just the consumerism and like materialism aspect of this film yeah so like in this oral history again uh brett easton ellis says he was newly relocated to new york in 23 alone and confused Um, I was trying to fill my unhappiness with the yuppie culture and buy things and going out to nice restaurants and then being enraged that it wasn't working. It was my pain that was interesting to me. The rest is fantasy. The novel stemmed out of that. Um, And then Mary Heron also said, Bateman is the embodiment of everything that's wrong with American vulture capitalism. Mm -hmm. All the worst and craziness forces. Obsessed with surfaces, obsessed with status, obsession with acquisition, and then the frustration and violence. But more about the first. Yeah. The Brett Easton Ellis quote. Yeah. Do you think, because I feel like I can relate to this a lot now, probably more than ever. I feel like we're such a, like a culture that just consumes and consumes and is told to consume, especially on TikTok, just consume, yes. consume to fill this void, to fill this unhappiness we have. And the solution is to buy more things. And it just like doesn't work. But we're all kind of turning into Patrick Bateman is what I am trying to say. A little bit. Yeah. Because you're not going to be satisfied with just things, yeah. I guess. The more you buy is not going to, I don't know, bring you happiness. 
you're just going to have more things and you're going to ha- try to keep, I think it's like the constant trying to keep up is probably the most frustrating. It seems. Yeah. Well, that's like a fascination to me too. Like circling back to like his everything shower and like skincare routine, which it's like, I wonder if the rise of like the 10 step step skincare system and like the everything shower. It's like, I know it was before the p- pandemic, especially like, skincare routines and stuff but i've noticed as we've like gotten like progressed as a society as years have gone on and like the country being especially in turmoil like especially the trump administration now like pandemic to post pandemic like i wonder if we're like coping Hmm. by consuming maybe it's a distraction that's how i i mean Sometimes that's how I distract myself. Yeah? Yeah. Yo, could, what do you... Yeah, tell me about that. I go to the Dollar Tree. Yeah. Just to feel something. Just, you know. So do you just, like, buy a lot from the Dollar Tree to, like, feel something? Sometimes. Or just little things. Just... It's a quick fix. Mm. It's that dopamine rush. Gotcha. But then sometimes I'm like, oh, why did I buy that junk? Like that t- I didn't need that. <laughs> really? And I'm, like, the opposite. I'll, like, buy something really expensive to be, like, I'm worth it. But say say it with rage, just like Patrick Bateman. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm worth it. I'm worth it. You think I don't? Just like talking to myself. You think I'm not worth it? I'll show you. I'll show. That's funny. But I don't know. I definitely think our society's been become more consumerist. Like it just hasn't stopped, and it may never. Just crazy. Yeah. How do we go from here? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like. You know, that cottagecore trend for a while. That was just a trend. I don't think we'll, we really want to go back to, you know, our not having luxuries. No, I think that was a like a, a nice thought. Nice thought. But also based in consumerism because all like the cores of 2021 to 2023, it's all just about consuming. It's all like, oh, I want to be in cottage core lifestyle or Barbie core lifestyle yeah. and get buy these things. Ballet core lifestyles, buying these things. It's always about buying these things and not actually doing these things. That's so true. Like no one's going out to the ca- like live in the woods. No. Like a fairy. Like that's no. not happening. It's just like trying on a it's costume, buying something. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what Patrick Bateman's doing. It is. Even <laughs> trying his hand at killing. Yeah. So we're all just being conditioned to be psychopaths. Pretty much. I know. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it seems that way. Yeah. But did you have any standouts from American Psycho? Just any standout scenes or standout like themes, thoughts? I did enjoy the scene where he's talking about Whitney Houston. <laughs> um, and he's just like talking about her music. And he said something like, um, like in a world where it's like, hard to have empathy for others you can have you know you can try to have empathy for yourself or something i, I don't know i mean it just like had this whole little monologue about when Houston, and it cracked me up but i was like yeah it's like the, i don't know it's so funny like the little moments like that that you're like oh yeah that's kind of human of him and then he's like the i don't killings. know i love his monologue about phil collins Oh, yeah. I love that he's just like, do you like Phil Collins? And then he goes on a whole rant about like how Genesis really came into their own when Phil Collins (laughs) became the forefront of the band. And I was like following him. I was like, yeah, Yeah. okay, I get it. I I understand. I feel you. And but then he was like, which I think this is the genius and the comedy of Mary Heron and um, what's her name? Guinevere Turner. Yeah. But when he's like, he d- goes on this whole thing about Phil Collins and Genesis. And then he's like, have you heard Sousa Studio? Oh, yeah. Sousa Studio. I'm like, what? <laughs> but no, I love it. I love the iconic um, Paul Allen scene where he's like, Huey Lewis in the news. He's always talking about they ca- really came into their own. He Lewis. talks about it in Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. When he says four, they really came into their own with hit to be square. I love his moonwalk when he puts on his raincoat. Mm-hmm. The rain is like, is that a raincoat? Yes, it is. <laughs> like, 
I, some people like at the time were really against it. And it was one of Christian Bale's improvisations. And I'm like, oh. that's probably the most iconic scene in the movie. Because he's having fun when he's killing. Fun. He finds his purpose. He finds his purpose. <laughs> Even if it's all in his head, it's his purpose. That is crazy. I didn't think about that. He's Maybe that's why he's like, I don't know. He's like liberated. Yeah. He's not acting anymore. Yeah. And people are listening to what he has to say. Well, maybe not. But he's listening to what he has to he's say. Listening. He loves he's, it. He's grabbed the mic. <laughs> He's fully yeah. in. The people are like, what are you talking about? Who? He's a star. <laughs> you know, did you find this movie like kind of like the way he talks similar to like the Truman Show? Oh, a little bit. Because it, it yeah. made me think of the Truman Show. I don't know. I think maybe just that like putting on an act maybe of it. You know how like when Truman's like, and if I don't see a, what does he say? Good night. Good luck. Good, and good, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. You know, I know. I'm, no, I, yeah, it's like fully this like false, like I'm just a guy, like I'm talking on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's like putting on. He's putting on. And so is Truman. Truman's putting on a show. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. No, but I see those similarities. I just thought that was interesting. I'm like, oh, this is like a thing with satire or maybe just maybe the yeah. characters are in on it or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like also breaking through the facade. Like I love like the the scene that really sets the tone for me is when he's at that 1980s nightclub mm. and he tells the bartender he wants to like murder her uh-huh and just the way he says it knowing that she can't hear but just like that breaking of who he is kind of showing his true self i'm like oh this movie's going to be good cuz you know it just it I'm made gonna, me just chuckle please. yeah yeah it was like the slips. I'm like, ah, oh. sometimes I think, I don't think things quite that far, but you know, it is like breaking a wall. Like yeah. Lifting off the mask. Yeah. The Freedman's peel off mask. Yes. Yeah. Which feel great. Which now I'm like, maybe I should go back to them. Do they still make them? I think they do. Yeah. Why'd you stop with your Freedman's peel off mask? I think my face didn't like Freedman's for a while. Or I don't know. My face is so picky with products I, I remember for years doing those masks with you and breaking out every single time but they're still fun to peel <laughs> but they're off. fun to peel off and they're fun to like put on yeah oh try to peel it off like you know when you peel in like a tangerine in one go ah that's so a little hard. cutie it's so hard to do in one go it did make me feel better that when he peeled his mask off he, there was some on his eyebrows and his hairline i'm like yes. that was one take by the way oh really one take the first take oh nice not bad though. Yeah, no, I, he did a pretty great job. That Oscar winning to me for peeling off the Friedman's mask. Oh, I know what scene stood out to me. Um, when he's listening to "Walking on Sunshine" in his headphones as he's like coming into work. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. Ooh, just like the funny like faces he makes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like he's just pumping himself up though to go into work. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> It's a vibe. I love the the visual of him with the Walkman on, listening to Walking on Sunshine, just like stone cold, like face, just stone cold. Like no real emotion. Mm -mm. Just listening Walking to Walking on, on sunshine. sunshine. That also really does set the tone. I feel like there's a lot of things. It's just so well directed. American Psycho, I think, is really great. I agree. Um. Oh, yeah, the scene where he's, like, he ha he's having this affair. Mm -hmm. um, I forget what her name is, but, you know, it's, he's having an affair. I think they're all, like, mutual friends, though, right? Yeah. It's, like, with a mutual friend. Yeah, but it's kind of implied that, like, his girlfriend's having an affair. and Oh, yeah, she's also, I forgot about that. Yes, they're all having affairs, I suppose. But anyway, he takes this girl out. He says it's Dorcia and it's definitely not. <laughs> and she's like, oh, is this Dorcia? And he's like, uh-huh. And like it says like Barcadia or something on the menu. <laughs> he like just straight up <laughs> lies. I don't know. I just think it's funny. But she's also out of it. She's, yeah. She's people like are doing so drugs. That's another thing. That's another takeaway. Like all these high society people have problems and are like They all not do sober. drugs. sober. Yeah. Even today. So many people that you're like, why are they functioning like that? They're on drugs. Mm. that's what i've realized either you're on coke or you're on ozempic 
And I feel lame because I can't tell. Like someone will be like so hyper and so like present and like intense and like not sleeping and getting work done. And I'm like, they're so productive. (laughs) You're like, you're like, how do they do it? I know. No, literally (laughs) I was around this girl and I was like, you look so amazing. And every time I saw her, which was only in the span of a month, I, every day I'd be like, man, you're so thin. Like you lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. Like, how'd you do it? And she was like, Oh, I'm on medication. And my mind went, that was rude of me to ask, which it was. And she's very sick. She's very ill. Come to find out she was on Ozempic. They're all on Ozempic. Wow. So, okay. Anyone gets skinnier really quick. Ozempic. Mm -hmm. Anyone that just magically doesn't sleep and is super productive. They're probably on Coke. That's fair. That's a fair assumption. Or popping the Maddies. Yeah. I I just think it's a thing. Couldn't be me. But I I wish I was productive. (laughs) Oh, but what was my point? Oh, just my point was I think you, there's a lot of people that are on drugs that you're probably not aware. <laughs> like it's just yeah. Well, that's what the movie made it seem like too. Just it's around. It's like you're desensitized to it as well. They're three six five. Yes, they're all party girls. Yeah. <laughs> Is Patrick Bateman Brad? Maybe. Maybe a little. You're like, can I tell you a story? Yeah, always. I was recently told that my late grandmother. She gave my dad a necklace on a trip with a little spoon on it. No. And or she got one. I don't know if she gave it to him or he was she was just like flexing that she got this necklace. A Coke spoon? Yes. She totally bought a Coke spoon. So my like sweet like Jesus loving grandma was like three, six, five. She probably didn't even know. No, She was like not aware. None the wiser. Oh, that's really sweet. Meanwhile, I'm like, why is everyone so skinny now? Like, where's my yeah. no, no. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Just thought I'd tell you that story. That is wild. That's really funny. Yeah. But I mean, I get. I've I've seen those. I've like, oh, it's a cute little spoon. Like, I I forget who told me that's what it was. I'm like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Sure, sure. You know, yeah. it's crazy. Crazy world we live in. Well, Patrick Bateman's brat and a baby girl. <laughs> but any final thoughts on American Psycho? Um, I thought it was interesting how people are just so obsessed with also like designer brands in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like the scene where he's disposing. I guess it's I'm pretty sure it's after he killed um, Paul. Yeah. And he's got like a body bag of sorts. And well, for onesies, he's like dragging the body like through the hotel lobby and like leaving a whole trail of blood. And like th- what the hotel, like the guy doesn't even notice. Yeah. The guy at the desk doesn't notice. And I'm like, oh, I think that's part of the comedy, too. It's like maybe he didn't kill people and it's in his head or maybe everyone in this world is it's so superficial and self-absorbed. That's what I took away, too. I'm like, maybe they're just not even aware. Like they're mm-hmm. just so, yeah, in their own zone. They're not even paying attention. But I thought it was funny. Some, he runs into someone he knows as he's putting the body in the trunk. And the guy's like, oh, my God, where'd you get that overnight bag? And he's like, John Paul Gaultier. <laughs> I'm like, it, it was so funny. But it was also like, oh, I feel like there's some truth. Because they say there's yeah. truth in comedy. So I feel like there are some elements of truth in this film. A hundred percent. That may, that That's what makes it so funny. Yeah. I don't know. That scene, I feel like, just really sums up that, like hundred percent comedy. I don't know. It sums up American Psycho, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to hide a body. It's like clearly. <laughs> he's, I mean, like, what else would be in there? Yes. Oh. I love it. I don't know. I really enjoyed this movie. Um. I also enjoyed like when he's doing his crossword and it's just meat and bones. He's just. I don't know. He's clearly <laughs> disturbed. <laughs> Was it what you expected going in? this it, watch okay well it was it was better but i you did give me a bit of a heads up because we've talked about this movie a bit because i'm like i've been very adverse to watching yeah. it yeah it left an impression on me and it really did scare me as a kid because like i don't think i should have watched it like you know yeah probably you, did you you probably didn't pick up on a lot of the funny 
not like at humor. all no not at all but um I picked up on the misogyny yeah you know and that's I was like that was my takeaway I was like damn that's really like this is horrible but um because we had talked about it and you're like Bree this is really fun like you got to see this you're gonna have a different perspective and I I, I do yeah I actually kind of like this movie so yeah, yeah. you just kind of like it. no I really I, I like it <laughs> <laughs> just kind of it's just like you're like so shy around it you're like <laughs> well maybe i like it kind of maybe i don't know <laughs> no i enjoyed it i just think it's interesting because i feel like patrick bateman it's it's interesting what they did with his character you know because i think he's on some levels relatable like in the way that he tries to conform to society and like the way that that maybe society like it keeps changing like the rules maybe you know what i mean mm. like nothing's ever enough yeah and that feeling of inadequacy is so like, interesting that a serial killer would feel that way yeah but maybe you have to to be a serial killer i don't know well, that's like consumerism the way you just described that seems like the rat weight ra- rat race that we are in yes today. it's a rat race that's what i'm trying to say thank you we live in a society <laughs> yeah there's a society but no but that's that's interesting that you bring that up because nothing is ever good enough for Patrick Bateman when he is consuming, when he's just like his quote unquote normal Wall Street bro. Nothing's ever good enough when he's the serial killer's self or the when he's doing that by night. Nothing is ever good enough. Mm-mm. Like there's always something to. I don't know. Kill someone to kill something to consume. <laughs> Yeah. Something to buy, something to... With no real end goal, though. No. J- well, impressing people. Because when he's, like, talking about how he basically killed all these people for nothing, because he can't get that validation yeah. from his, like, you know, with, from, like, Justin Thoreau and uh, Josh Lucas, his Wall Street boys, you know? That's true. They won't give it to him. Yeah. Because they don't know about this, so he can't even get that validation and, like... From my what my fiance said, a lot of just men, that's like their point in life is to either have validation from their friends or from like a partner. Huh. And that's why they do everything and that's why they're never happy. Interesting. Wow. Not to yeah, no, blanket that's statement, but yeah. Yeah. But I feel like we're all like that to some degree. I think so. Yeah. We all want to be accepted. And yeah. And also we all want to consume capitalism baby mm-hmm. yeah that's not going away <laughs> yeah no if anything it's getting worse yeah or better i don't know maybe we're more self-aware now maybe yeah i think so i think we're more self-aware maybe at the time it was jarring yeah maybe people weren't as self-aware i feel like it's it's a very interesting thing that american psycho when the movie came out it was 2000 mm-hmm. and a lot of focus on the time. Like one of the criticisms I was reading was someone was upset because it was like, they were like, you can't put this movie out. It's so close to Columbine. And they were like, what does Columbine have to do with this? Mm. Which is like so true. But I know that was a thing. Like even with scream three, they had to cut out all the scenes because Uh. of Columbine and like just where we were like 99 to 2000 is like very different from the eighties. It's a good point. And very different from 2024. It's maybe like a an interesting time where we're maybe because, you know, things are like ebbs and flows. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe we were in like a, a different. We weren't ready. We, the time. violence wasn't palatable. Yeah. Like maybe we weren't able to see the humor in it or we weren't like. We didn't want it to bite maybe or like this. Yeah. Maybe we didn't want a, something to bite. Like, you know, like post 9-11 films, how like it took a really long time. For like music and movies to um to really talk about nine eleven in like yeah. a an interesting way. Yeah. Need that space, I Maybe. guess. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like I feel like American Psycho is a classic and I feel like it totally could come out today and feel just as fresh, honestly. Um, and just be r- relevant. Also, I think Patrick Bateman, it's kind of scary because you know, if you think a lot of movies about serial killers, it's all very like I mean, we just watched Scream, you know? Yeah. It's it's not super realistic. You know what I mean? Like, it. I mean, yeah, maybe it could happen. But, well, Scream's different because the 
killer is always changing too. But well, the crazy thing about, or the scary thing to me about Scream is that it could be the teenage boys that you go to high school with. Yeah. Senselessly killing these murders. And to me, the scary thing about Patrick Bateman is it could just be this random finance bro. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Scream. Yeah. Who just hates women. It could. Maybe it is. They're both have uh, parallels then. Like maybe there's a pipeline. Maybe. A Billy Loomis. But I know what you mean. Like American Psycho is a, a completely different film. Yeah, it just seems like it could happen, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like, there could just be someone who's, like, on the verge of a psychotic break that's just living your... You know what I mean? Like, as opposed to, like, I don't know, like a fantastical serial killer of sorts or, like, a Freddy Krueger, someone that hides behind a mask. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, a... Yeah. You know, just someone that looks and acts like an everyday person. You want to hear something crazy? Huh. Do you remember that documentary that came out a couple years ago called don't f with cats it was on netflix yeah but i I didn't watch it because i heard it would be disturbing right well um that man said one of his inspirations was patrick bateman and american psycho no so yikes what a crazy it's a sick sick world we're living in to quote sinbad and jingle all the way but that's interesting because patrick bateman also references ted bundy like he, that's like his i like that's like his idol it seems because mm-hmm. he, he's like oh yeah fun fact about <laughs> like he just drops it like like you know like he's talking about one of his heroes is what it comes off as yeah huey lewis in the news <laughs> whitney houston ted, ted bundy, bundy. <laughs> uh you know yeah all the greats yeah all the greats <laughs> wow i don't know about you but think that's that's all she wrote yeah yeah well i gotta go um return some videotapes oh yes <laughs> oh my god i love that that was an excuse to <laughs> yeah yeah to leave a situation i wonder if that'll work today just i was like i gotta go gotta go return some videotapes yeah. was that like the the 90s version of i gotta go feed my cat maybe well have you seen those like blockbuster ads or the ones that are like if you're late like you're gonna pay the fee like it's like in really intense like if you, you what, what's the fee you don't want late fees i don't know but it, it costs oh money. like no more late fees yeah i think so i don't know if it goes on your your record as a movie renter person wow or if they just if you just pay a fee but you might you know would you go to jail I don't know. I don't know how high the stakes are, but I saw this one commercial and it made it seem like really high stakes. I have to find it. Well, the stakes are really high then. So we got to go return <laughs> some videotapes, I guess. Yep. But well, thanks. Well, oh, go ahead. Thanks for listening. Um, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Late to the Party is hosted by Nikki Jensen and Brie Picconi. Our podcast is produced by Grace Dunbar and edited by Brie. That's me. Thanks for listening. Make sure to rate and review us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.